Oh, I did a thing with the golf cart. <laughs> A few years ago, we bought this used golf cart. The kids have been playing with it and having a great time, but now they kind of lost interest. So I decided to spice it up. To start with, I put a big lift kit on it. If I had to do it over again, I might not go quite so high, because as you'll see later, it gets a little unstable. This particular lift kit that I bought requires you to replace these A-arms, which was kind of a pain to take off. There are some that do the lift differently and don't require the A-arms to come off or drilling into the frame like I had to do here. But I'm actually pretty happy with the one I got. The other style of lift kit uses elongated spindles instead of new A-arms. This one was more expensive, so I'm going to go ahead and tell myself that it's better. It looks pretty good, and it's got a picture of a rhinoceros on it. So how can you not love that? Uh, yes, that is a small block Chevy over there. No, I'm not going to put that in the golf cart. Putting the shocks back on was pretty easy. I think you can change the angle of the wheels a little bit if you use different holes on that upper bracket. Come on, get in there, kick it, yeah. The real purpose of the lift kit is just to be able to fit the tires on. The tires I got are massive, and I didn't know it at the time, but they actually are not very good for driving on hard surfaces. Things get a little wobbly. There's that beautiful Chevy 350 again. That one's going in our uh, 66 Chevelle. Oh, yeah, you had to bend over, didn't you? If you're looking for a super stylish onesie like mine, I got mine from Amazon. In hindsight, I really wish I would have taken it for a test drive when it still looked like this. Now, if you're easily prone to motion sickness, you might want to look away. I don't know what this idiot cameraman was doing right here, besides doing a very poor job of showing you where the bracket extension goes for the rear part of the lift kit. I didn't get much actual footage of putting together the rear part, because it was such a pain in the butt. So I'm sorry, this is all you get. Next thing I did was change out the old motor controller. When I bought these huge scissors from Harbor Freight, Dawson said, when are you ever gonna use those? See Dawson, everybody needs a huge pair of scissors because you just never know. One thing's for sure, I'll use those scissors a lot more than I'll ever use these huge cable clamps again. So this aftermarket hot rod motor controller was made to fit right in this golf cart. All the bolt holes line up perfectly uh, the wires are all labeled the same. The only modification I had to make was splitting that one negative wire. There are a few different options for these aftermarket motor controllers for golf carts like this. There's a couple main reasons to change the motor controller. First of all, this one will put out a whole lot more current than the standard one that it comes with. And that means more power to the motor. And this one also lets you adjust how you use that power, whether you want a higher top speed or more torque for climbing hills. And you can actually make those adjustments as you're driving. This is the Bluetooth control module that lets you make those adjustments on a phone app. They also sell a module that comes with some dials you can put on your dashboard. I really thought that the motor controller would make a huge difference in the speed, but it really didn't. So the next thing I did was replace the batteries. I have to admit, I was not very good at taking care of these old water-filled lead-acid batteries. They really weren't holding a charge very well anymore. And as soon as you stepped on the gas, the voltage dropped like 25%. This is actually the battery pack that I had for my electric VW bug conversion. I reconfigured it to be 48 volts instead of 96, and I got a new 48 volt BMS. Now, like every golf cart, this one has a nice big flat roof and it sits out in the sun all the time. So I put a solar panel on top and now it charges while it sits. So now we'd made all these performance improvements. So it was time to work on the appearance. We thought a lot about what to do with the color, maybe purple, maybe flames. In the end, we settled on flat forest green. It turned out that was a really good choice because it goes really nicely with the black wheels and the tan on the seats and the roof. Bonus points for anyone who can tell the story of the rip in my pants. I'll give you a hint, it's in one of my old videos. We put on two coats of green and then two coats of clear. We're gonna be using this mostly up at our Hobbit house. It's on 40 acres with lots of hills and it's off the grid. But with all the modifications that we've made to this golf cart, it is now the perfect Hobbit house vehicle. And the finishing touch was a vinyl cutout of our Hobbit house logo. Okay, <laughs> test drive. Ready? 
I'm not sure. I'm a little nervous. Faster, huh? Way faster. So we're climbing a hill. We lowered the speed, which increases the torque. So we went up that hill and didn't slow down at all. At all. No. Not even, not even a little. And with the regular golf cart, it would go down to like four miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. With the the last motor controller and the lead acid battery and all that, we almost were pushing it up the hill. It was so bad. I literally did push it up the hill. <laughs> Okay, bud, what do you think? Can you slow it down so I can drive it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can actually slow it down. We can, can. The, the same motor controller that makes it go faster makes it, I can turn it down too, so. Okay. And I could probably even turn it up a little more. No, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, all right. Well, should we sign off? Yes. You wanna do it? Yes. Go for it. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. He's pretty good. <laughs> thanks. I've done it for like six years. Four, four years? Yeah. If you add it all up, this project was pretty expensive. But it's also a lot of fun, so I'm glad I did it. And when you compare this to what it costs to buy a souped up golf cart, which is over $10,000 right now, I still think it's a pretty good deal. This project turned out so good that I've already started working on the next one. I got a couple of these junked out gem cars and I've already started souping them up. So be on the lookout for a video about how that's going. This is one of many, many random projects that I do. If you want to chat with me or others who enjoy projects like this, check us out on Facebook and Discord. And as if that wasn't enough, I do live streams on YouTube and Twitch every Sunday morning. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.